Welcome back everyone, Damien here from Billetproof Designs and we're going to go over our Chevy wheel collar wheel dress up kit. Here's the kit installed. Uh, this is a very simple install. There's a collar that retains the bullet cap and the collar is fastened from the back side of the wheel so it's, uh, it's impossible to steal unless you cut it off which will damage the wheel. This is what the kit <clears throat> comes with. Four bullet caps comes with four collars available in black or polished, 24 lug nuts available in half 20 or 7 16 20, and all the hardware required uh, to fasten everything together, all stainless steel. Like I said, this is a very easy install. It requires minimal tools, which most people have at home. So, kit comes with detailed instructions and two templates, just in case you mess one up. Tools required are screwdriver, cordless drill or electric drill, Directions say a 532nd drill bit, but I like to use a little bit larger drill bit. I have an 1160 force here, it allows for a little more fudge factor. Uh, center punch and hammer, and some Loctite for the fasteners. Time to get to work. First thing we have to do is cut out our template. So I have two templates here provided for you in case you damage one. And everything's called out in the drawing as far as which line to cut <clears throat> with regards to the wheel that you have. So this kit was designed for either 22 inch GM transport or transit wheels and 15 inch steelies. And this kit will work with um, older model 60 style steelies or the newer six lug and five lug rally style steel wheels in 15 inch size. All right, here's our victim. Like I said, this is a rally style wheel six lug in 15 inch. And now we're going to mark the locations for the securing fasteners, the fasten fasteners that secure the collar to the wheel. So once you have everything cut out on the template, this ID is the same size as the flange on the wheel. Now, in this particular wheel, there's a good bit of a dish. So if you lay this template over top of this flange and you go to center punch it, it's going to deform the template a little bit. So you're going to have some room for error here. What I like to do is mark it, center punch it from the back side. <clears throat> so, it's very easy to get it centered up. You can use some masking tape if you like. But you're basically going to make the template ID and the wheel concentric with one another, centered. And we're going to go ahead and center punch it. As you center punch, be sure that the template does not move, otherwise nothing is going to fit. It. You can remove your template, go back and center punch the holes. Now we have everything lined up, center punched, and we're ready to drill. Again, the directions say a 532nd drill bit. That's a clearance drill bit for our number six fastener, which are the fasteners that you use to attach this collar. However, like I said, 1164 will give you a little bit more fudge factor, and uh, the flathead screw heads still won't pull through the wheel. So let's drill this out. Now we're ready to countersink these holes. This is an important step. When we countersink these, we're basically given clearance on the back side of the wheel for these screw heads. You do not want these screw heads to be proud of this flange here. This flange seats up against your hub, and if these screw heads are further out than this flange, they're going to contact your wheel hub first, and your wheel's not going to sit flat against the surface. So, very easy to do. So when you're countersinking, go very slow, otherwise you, um, you'll incur premature tool wear. So countersink a diameter where you think that screw head's going to be flat and drop that screw head in. That screw head should be below that surface. If it is, you're good and you can move on to the next hole.
Pull the fastener out and drop it in every countersunk hole. Just to check to make sure that head is below that surface. Looks good. So after we drill the holes, you're gonna notice that the opposite side from where you started drilling, you're gonna have some burrs. So just get a little rat tail file and you're gonna make sure there's no burrs. Before we go any further, we're gonna check fitment. And to do this, we're gonna lay this collar over the flange and we're gonna check it from the back side to make sure that these four holes on the outer flange line up with the holes that we just drilled. Put your collar on there. Rotate it until you see a hole. And then go ahead and check the other three. Make sure they're all lined up. If they're not lined up, it's not a problem. If you misdrilled, not a problem. Get your template and index it 45 degrees and drill more holes in between the ones that you just did. It's not the best way, but you're not going to ruin a wheel. All right, now we're ready to install the bullet cap into the collar. Very simple. Drop it in. There is clearance here in case you buy a set of raw polished ones and you decide to paint to color match your wheels. There's plenty of clearance here for paint buildup, so no need to worry. Now, the pan heads are the fasteners that are used to secure the collar to the bullet cap. And only the head of the fastener is gonna contact the flange on the collar. So this flange and the head of the screw are what secure it in. So drop that in, put a little bit of Loctite on each hole. Uh, I have green Loctite here, it's plenty strong for fasteners like this. Otherwise, if you have blue, I wouldn't recommend a red just in case you want to disassemble. Okay, now that I have the screws in, I don't have them tightened down all the way so the bullet cap is able to rotate inside the collar. Now you'll notice there's four little things that stick up here. Um, you don't want them to contact the head of the fastener. It'll throw the centering off. So once you have the fasteners in, take a look at this side. Make sure everything looks centered. Flip it back around and tighten up evenly. Don't tighten one side or one fastener all the way. Go around until you have them all snowed and then go ahead and tighten them. And if you've installed it properly, when you flip it around, everything should be nice and centered with an even reveal all the way around. Do not over tighten these. They're only 632 fasteners and they're being threaded into aluminum. It can strip very easily. The Loctite will do the job in keeping them in place. And also, once it's seated and mounted on the wheel, these cannot back out. They can only back out so far before they contact the wheel. All right, here's the last step. A little bit more Loctite in these four holes, or you can put them right up, a little drop right on the fastener, and fasten from the back side. Again, don't tighten them down all the way just yet. Just get them all started. If you did a good job with your template and center, center punch marks, everything should just fall together. Once you've had all the fasteners started, you can go ahead and tighten up everything else. Again, there are only 632 screws being threaded into aluminum, so be gentle with your tightening. It's very, very easy to strip these. Just use your fingertips to tighten, not your whole hand. And that's it. With the acorn nuts and the bullet cap, you have a nice wheel dress up kit for your truck. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was informative and hope to see you again next time.